My name is Anamika Kishirwani and I'm a partner database specialist here at AWS, where my focus is NoSQL databases. Now, this is the second nugget under cost optimization. In this short video, we are going to discuss all about the unused resources that you can actually identify and take relevant actions in order to decrease your DynamoDB spend. There are a lot of times we do not realize that a resource, resource is just sitting idle and getting charged. If requirements change, your resources might not be needed anymore. And this not only is true for DynamoDB, it is actually hold true for any AWS service. So the best practice is always to review your existing architecture decisions to ensure that you continue to be more cost effective as your requirements change, be aggressive and just decommissioning your resources, your services and your system that you do not longer need to avoid any unnecessary charges. Now, since we are talking about DynamoDB, let's just see how we can handle those unused resources to avoid any unnecessary cost. Here on the slide, you can see there are seven areas under which you can focus to reduce the DynamoDB spend. We have table, indexes, global tables, cloud trail, contributor insights, backups, and data. So the first one in this is unused table. We have CloudWatch metrics, which can help us to answer almost all your questions about your DynamoDB table utilization. To identify any unused table, you can check the read and write capacity units under CloudWatch in order to see if your table utilization is there. Validate if your table has any reads or writes in the last 30 or 60 days for that matter. If you have found that the RCU and WCU consumption is zero or almost zero, but you still want the table to be there in the DynamoDB site, consider if you're using provision mode, set the auto scaling to the lowest minimum setting according to your, your use case. Or you can actually consider switching it to an on-demand as you will be charged for what you will do. But with this, you will still incur the storage costs. Hence, what you can do is you can leverage the standard IA table class to archive this on the DynamoDB end. And also at the end, if the table is no longer required, you can actually take the backup of the table and can take, delete the table. To back up the table, you can actually use a DynamoDB API or you can use AWS backup to leverage the cold storage tiering, or you can export it to S3 to use S3 storage class to further reduce the cost. So this was about the unused table. The second one is the unused indexes. To identify the unused indexes, you can again use the same consume capacity units. Please make sure when you are trying to look into CloudWatch, provide the index name also along with the table name in that particular filter. Now this can be either a local secondary indexes or a global secondary index. If you identify any LSI that is unused, you can actually delete the LSI because it gets created and deleted with the main table. Hence what you can do is you can simply avoid writing any items to that LSI while not populating the sort key attribute of that LSI. That was on the LSI side. Now, if you see any GSI getting unused, there are a few options which you can leverage. You can either get rid of the LSI by deleting it. That's the first one. Or you can avoid projecting all the table attributes to the GSI. It will save you on the WCUs and on the storage cost. And again, this is done on the index con configuration side. The third one is if, for example, the GSI usage is unfrequent, you can validate if scanning the base table is more cost efficient than having an ideal GSI, which is actually you are using it only a few times during the entire month. There is a nugget on this topic titled GSI versus scan. This is a QR code and you will find the link under the captions. Now, the third one in this case is unused global table. With global tables, the replica costs are with respect to replicated WCUs, RCUs, storage, and data transfer between the regions. With global tables, the cost is very straightforward when it comes to calculating the cost for the base table and the replica. Hence, if you find any replicas that are unused, you can simply go ahead and remove the region in order to avoid any replicated WCUs or storage cost. But if you want to keep it as a, as a standby or for some reads, 
try to see if the standard IA tab table class can actually help with the cost if the cost of the table is more or storage intensive. We also have one nugget on the standard IA. This is the QR code. And again, the links are under the caption to read more on this. Go ahead and double check your organization's DR policies, because in some cases we have seen there, there are customers which actually use global tables for DR purposes. Now the next one is unused cloud trail for DynamoDB events. It was launched in 2021. Now, CloudTrail actually can capture DynamoDB data events, uh, which is going to get delivered to Amazon S3. This cost is as per the number of DynamoDB data events. Hence, if, for example, your traffic grows higher, this cost can actually increase and it can be very significant. The next one is unused contributor insights. To understand the hot key partition or hot key condition in DynamoDB, we leverage contributor insights. Now, this, is a, this, this cost will appear under the CloudWorth section of your monthly cost. These charges are again calculated based on the number of DynamoDB events. Each time when you're doing a delete or write operation against an item, it will be represented as one event. Or if you have a sort key along with your partition key, this will be equivalent to two events. And this is going to be a separate for your base table and GSIs. So now let's look into some data on how cloud trail and contribute contributor insights can cost you here you can see the cost is 10 cents per 100k data events now assuming the events at um, thousand and ten thousand you can see the cost of it is 864 dollars and the cost per years is around 300k so this is a huge value right and here in this case, I have only selected the events being 10,000. If you increase it as DynamoDB can support up to millions of events, this cost can actually grow very significant. The same goes true for the contributor insights. In this case, we have three cents per this many events and hence calculating it against thousand, the cost is around $1,800 per year. And if I increase it to further, you can see the cost has increased up to 18,000. So this is a huge cost. So it is recommended to use it during troubleshooting and then dis disable it once the work is done. Now the next is unused snapshots. In DynamoDB, you can create on-demand backups for a long-term retention or archiving it for regulatory compliance needs. Now you can create these backups with the help of DynamoDB API or with the help of AWS backups. These backups are full backups and are costed with the GB level. Hence, for the US East one region, you can see the cost is around 10 cents per GB per month. Use the integration with AWS backup. You can keep the retention policy at one and always keep the latest photo of your data. With that, you can also leverage lifecycle to move backups to cold storage with a reduced cost of three cents per GB per month. And also you can delete the backups after an expiration period. This will save you money and also will ease the work of deleting the backups. Now, the last one is cold data. If your table is very large with years worth of data and your application is only utilizing the last two weeks or maybe two months of data, you're technically spending an unnecessary amount of money on storage with DynamoDB. With this, you can actually consider exporting your data to S3 for a long-term archival solution. And you can do this with the help of export to S3 feature, this does not consume read capacity on the table and has no impact on the table performance and availability. Hence, this is a cost optimized way to move the data to S3. Another one is if, for example, you have a rotating expiration of items within your table, you can actually delete the unused items with the help of TTL. Now, TTL expires the items and archive them with the help of DynamoDB streams and Lambda. So TTL expiry actually does not incur you any WCUs to delete the items. And also you're not getting charged for any DynamoDB streams calls of get records API from the Lambda. Hence, you're just not saving on the storage. You're also saving on the archiving cost. So this was it under the cost optimization nugget two. My name is Anamika Kesharwani. I'm a partner database specialist and I thank you for watching. See you next time.